Many of us know the feeling. You see a dog in public and you want to say hi, hello, and the pet the cutie right then and there. Absolutely, but when it comes to canine companions, you have to consider the personal space of the handler, and there are many other important points to keep in mind as well. So our friends and puppy raisers, Jill Sabo and her son Jack, are here with their dog Donnie and his brother Justin. Hello, cutie. And Double National, trouble. <laughs> National Service Dog Month is September. So we're kind of getting a head start on this to really talk about it because I think that's very true. You see a dog in public and you want to say, especially kids, want to say hi. Right. And I think it's all about common sense. You know, there's that like kind of gut reaction where it's like, oh, here, I want to say hi to a dog. And then it's like, oh, wait, they have a vest on, they're working. Like, I kind of need to take a step back and say, okay, maybe this isn't the right time to go up and pet that dog. Yeah. yeah. So what's what's the, like, if you want to meet the dog or you're intrigued by, what's the important first thing that you should say? The first important thing is to always address the handler and not the dog. And right. say, hello, I, I love your dog. Would it be okay if I pet your dog? I understand your dog's working. And so just to give the handler the opportunity to say yes or no, um, because if you distract a service dog from what they're doing, it could be very detrimental to the to the handler because they may be performing a service, and if their mm -hmm. dog is distracted, they may miss a service, and that could be very it could have physical consequences and very hurtful consequences to the person. Right. It also we you also gave us the tip not to feed a service dog. Yes, because you never know. You should really never feed a dog in general because you never know if they have an allergy. Mm -hmm. And these dogs are so food motivated and trained with food that, that again, food could be very distracting for the service dogs. Because you don't want to mess up their training in, in that way. Uh, so if you if you are curious like, and you want to learn more about why that person has the service dog, how do you start that conversation in a way that makes people feel comfortable? Or should you just not ask that question? That's a really kind of difficult question to answer because you want to be really engaging with a person with a disability. They are people too and honestly nine times out of ten they are more than happy to talk about their disability, how their service dog helps, but at the same time you, know, you kind of have to you know read that room and say right. well maybe if right. they're not comfortable steer the conversation away. Yeah you don't want to make anybody uncomfortable. Right. Speaking and, of food motivated. Oh, I know, I know, I have treats in my hand. So Dottie's over here, Dustin's over here. Yes. I mean, do they get along well together? Oh, it seems oh my like they goodness. do. They love each other. Oh. They are they play so well together. They're both a little bit rambunctious players, um, but they play really well together. They're very gentle with each other and they run around like fools and it's very hard when they come together for the first to get them to sit down and make Because they just want to play. They just yeah. want to play. They I have to tell play. you, Donnie has been doing this thing, and I don't know if it's because you tucker him out, <laughs> but he has been sitting on my foot the last couple of weeks. He'll come in and just sit down, and he's right on my foot. Donnie always loves to be touching. He's very, very in your, needy. Very yeah. needy. But that's okay. Yeah. Oh, that's it's so comforting it's to have for a there. service dog. That's yeah. a good trait for a service dog to it's be. It's good to cool. have you here. You're yeah. bringing joy to our lives and someone else's soon, too. Absolutely. What beautiful dogs. Thank you so much.